Talk to you after the show podcast, precious show. We don't care. We're about to swear on the air. It's the after the show, so tune in if you dare. KBJ, get your skate every single day. It's uncensored. We can say what we want to say. Oh, yeah. Hello, and welcome to the KBJ after the show podcast. Yeah, baby. It is a Tuesday here today. It's feeling a little bit like a Monday. <laughs> a little stress. Kind of weird, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have a different day. Yeah, I got uh, whenever we're uh, one person down, it always adds a little bit of a struggle. So, yeah, we had uh, Suits is uh, out today following his saga from uh, yesterday. He's uh, on his path of interviews and doing his thing. Yeah, and the I, saga I, started last year. I mean, if we did. if we really want to take it back and talk about when the saga started, mm-hmm. it started in 2023. Well, there's some details too. To be quite honest with you, I didn't know we were talking to Suits yesterday about stuff that was going on. It, 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 it kind of blindsided me, to be quite honest with y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, there's details we can't really go into, so. I, yesterday was not, in my opinion, the best segment to. It, like, I, I just I didn't like how yesterday felt. Well, I think Suits is telling a story, and you know it's his truth, and it's where he is right now. But there's been a bunch of stuff that's happened behind the scenes, and it started way back last year. Remember when Suits was being evicted from his place? Him and his mm. mom were being kicked out. Uh, Because the lady raised their rent over $600 a month and they just couldn't afford it. And it was a whole thing. And so going back all the way back to then, we started trying behind the scenes to help Suits. The the one thing I I just want to say, and I'm not sure how much, because I want want Suits to be comfortable with talking because it's... I don't want people listening thinking that we're just letting suits go without any effort or any right. trying because that mm. is not the case at no. all. So no. I, I, I love suits like a family member, but I also, you know, he, we got to make sure it's the right move for suits. There's a bunch of different details that we haven't really even discussed, and I'm not sure if we're ever going to discuss, but. Just know it's not that fuck suits by. That's not no, that's not how it is. It's been a, no. over over a year of efforts to pull every string and do everything possible to try to make any angle happen. Um, and it's just that, you know, he's off looking in other paths and other directions and in other places of the country and was gonna be gone. And so it kind of got to the point where, you know, at some point we gotta start addressing you know what's going on because like we're suits and what's going on and then the the more shady and uh cagey you ask act about it then you know the more people suspect and get well, suspicious and I, so I, i'm over here still trying to figure out ways to keep him to stay yeah. but there's only a certain thing uh, there's only so much people can do in certain situations that yeah. you end up powerless and, I, and i've been receiving messages of you know, people coming down on me personally. I thought Suits was your friend. Well, I Jeez, would say, yeah. I would just say, you don't know the details. Like I know right. the details. Uh, Believe what, me, what you it's not have, what you're saying. What you and Virginia have done, have, I mean, have stepped up, done amazing things, uh, really putting your necks out and, and stretching in many different ways to try to uh, do everything possible. And conversations with management, saying, okay, hey, what can we do? How can this be possible? And it's it's just it's challenging. There's just I think everybody knows that there's a lot of people in financial stresses right now, and it's not ideal. And, you know, when you work for a corporation that is down, we are down. This company is making less money than it made before COVID. There's not a lot of jobs that this company is offering for growth and we've tried to put suits into other places here on the station yep. where he could make more money. It just didn't work well, out. That even goes back th- three years ago. I mean, right. the, those attempts and the trying to expand suits and uh, probably more than that, probably five years ago, we were right. trying to get podcasts and do this and all these kind of things to say, hey, we got to grow your role and try to find revenue and all that kind of stuff. So this is not something new. This is, in, in a sense, for us, the, the sadness is there because it's – you feel like it's a failed attempt. Things that you've been trying for a very long time, for years and years, uh, is just not turned out the way that you want it to. And so this is just where you are in, in the game right now. Not that it's over, but... No, but it, it, know, it hurts my heart to think right anyone now. would think we, we would just let suits go off into the night. That's that's not that's not my personal intention. No. And I'm... <laughs> well, I only got so much power, motherfuckers. Yeah, I mean, it's not... 
our decision to give Suits another gig here in the company where he makes more money. Hmm. That would have to be what happens because the position he's in is an entry-level position that he has managed to be in for many, many years. I just think we should probably... I just wanted to get that off our... I don't think we need to go into any details on stuff. I think we should wait for him to get back. Hmm. It just... it, it Look... We did. We tried. We want this for Suits. We love Suits. Suits is not somebody that we are going to just say, okay, bye, Suits. Best of luck. Behind the scenes, we fought and fought and fought and fought. Mm -hmm. And I just just, think I've I've resigned that I can't fight anymore. I've tried. I've done my best. I'm just saying I wasn't prepared to go on the air yesterday with it. I don't think Suits was either. And I, I I want everything to go well for him at his interviews, but I, I'm one of the people that, you know, if there's a way, there's, you know, yeah, it's not over yet. I hear you. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it is what it is, and we are where we are, and, you know, he's doing interview stuff right now and this week, and so I don't know how much more of that he's going to have going on and what's happening with him. But, yeah, sorry if anybody did feel blindsided with it. I've, I've, I just I'm to the point now where when he's not here so often, I don't know what to say about it. Um. I guess he's just out. So, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we can come up with something and and find a way to save him. But I get so many emails every single day with people that uh, are in stressful and strenuous situations. Ryan from Lake Worth, I know, is one. And he just said, man, they got to do something about this. I don't know if we can talk to former West Palm Beach Mayor Lois Frankel, but they got to do something to lower the housing. He said, I've got until April 1st to figure out something because my my backup plan was to live in my car and save enough money to leave Florida, but it was recently stolen. Oh, my gosh. And my backup plan then was a 5 by 8 janitor closet in my office building, so at least my things wouldn't get stolen. But, of course, that's where the janitor lives. (gasps) The janitor. And the locked emergency fire stairwell that stays protected by rain and mosquitoes is occupied by the construction worker in the attached photo who is building a luxury condo high rise across the street. The other stairwell is occupied by a Starbucks barista and the only other covered area that doesn't get wet has a Hilton Hotel employee living under it. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's a quick snapshot as to what some people are going through right now. I said, this is barbaric. Nobody should be living like this in this area with some of the wealthiest communities on earth. I got a friend finishing up a 12-year sentence who recently FaceTimed me from an iPhone in prison, and he's living a better quality of life than I am. Oh, my gosh. Our entire community is going to collapse if we don't get single-bedroom rates down to three to $500 a month like it used to be. And there's the photo of the person that's sleeping out of the stairwell. Just getting some stuff. So, yeah, I know a lot of people are going through it, and hopefully situations, including the one we're going through, will change and fast. Uh, Joseph said, I was listening to your podcast yesterday, and I do feel for suits. I've lived in South Florida my entire life, and I'm moving to Jacksonville next week. Too expensive in South Florida. I can't reach or I can't teach anymore and live off a small disability policy, even if I was still teaching Affording South Florida would be tough. Just a shame for all involved. I'll still listen to you guys as I have for the past 20 years. So, yeah, another person kind of shoving off from it. I did see that apparently on the federal level that uh, President Biden has at least talked about doing a $400 tax credit that would last for the next two years for people on their rent, which, uh, you know, hopefully that might be something that could help people out. It would be a $400 a month tax credit that you could put towards a mortgage because I guess the cost of a home is 5.7% higher this year uh, than it was last year. And then you have to come up with everything that you need for like closing costs. Mm -hmm. Like it's just not feasible for an average renter to come up with all that. Yeah. It's not. So, yeah, they're trying to do some stuff. Hopefully they can do it a little bit faster. Hang on, see what happens. We do have uh, Christy who listens to us in California, and she said, hey, I was uh, wanting to come visit Florida. My husband Sam and I are going to be coming to your area in April. I was hoping to get recommendations of hotels to stay at somewhere between Jupiter and Pompano Beach. Also, any suggestions on things to do on Wednesday through Friday would be much appreciated. Those are the best nights to go out. It's not so crazy Wednesday through Friday. Yeah, and you can do happy hour stuff, too. If you want to yes. save a little bit of money, happy hours are a great thing. And there are a lot of places in South Florida offer happy hours. 
which uh, makes it a lot more affordable. I guess the question is, you know, what do you like to do? Do you, you know, are you a kind of person who likes to be on the water, like paddleboarding or kayaking? Do you like beach bars? What kind of stuff do you want to see and do? And what's your budget for the hotel situation? Yeah. I like to go on those uh, sites like Hotels.com, Priceline.com, mm-hmm. uh, even stuff like Hotels Tonight, uh, Hopper. The Hopper app is great. Go on all those apps and shop around and cost compare. I think I like hotels slash motels better than a house at Airbnb. I don't think I like the Airbnb stuff. I'm afraid of the Airbnbs now with all the stories of hidden cameras and uh, just people putting cameras in the showers. I'm like, ugh. I, I, even with that said, I just find that the, I don't know, man, it, it's just, I didn't like it. I like, I like a hotel. I like the, I like the idea of room service. <laughs> you're still kind of doing a lot of work when you're doing Airbnb. A hotel to me just seems safer. I don't know if I'm just in this delusional state, but I feel like there's security, there's a front desk person, there's some kind of line of defense. At these Airbnbs, you're just on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've stayed in them before, but whenever we're staying with them, I stay with a group of people, never by myself at an Airbnb, and I always try to make sure somebody in the group has a gun. Oh, really? Because you never know. Never know, huh? If, if shit goes down, I like that somebody's packing heat in our group. Yeah, I don't want the gun myself. No. I want someone that's an expert in the gun. If it all goes down, yeah. get them. Mm-hmm. And I think an Airbnb, I don't know, the stories I hear these days, I, I would want somebody in my group to have a gun just in case shit went down yeah i think they got rid of the cameras in airbnbs if you have an airbnb property you can't have cameras in it anymore but they're hiding them that's the thing like well, i would imagine if somebody found them though they would take you off airbnb and you probably never be allowed putting that property back on it oh again. yeah but this is for the person that doesn't get caught right because mm-hmm. sure. i mean a person like me not that they want to see this fucking carcass <laughs> but a person like me i would never know you're filming me i wouldn't even think about it well they put cameras like in the alarm clock like in the face part of it where you're not looking for a camera and yeah of course there's a red light because there's always a red light on the front of the alarm clock when you think of a hidden camera what is the first feeling that comes over you is it security or is it shadiness shadiness Shadiness. if they're putting a camera on the inside of the bedroom of the place they rent out they're looking to get video of you well, but you see a lot of surveillance cameras that also happen on houses, and that's done for security. That's the outside. Outside, I, I understand. I don't ever want to be in a place where I think I'm always being recorded while I'm talking and chilling in so my house. So external cameras, safe and secure. Internal cameras, shady and creepy. Yep. Yeah. That's for Airbnb, it. yes. Mm-hmm. Unless I'm a person that has those cameras inside, and everyone that comes in and go, all right, guys, it's always being filmed, just so you know. If you tell people it's not, it's not shady, but if you have an inside camera and you don't tell anybody that i don't like that <laughs> I don't you're like up it. to no good you're trying to listen to some son of a bitches yeah um the thing i think would be interesting and there's so much talk going on on social media right now that you don't know how many of it's how much of it's going to be true but apparently diddy loved himself an indoor camera Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the footage that they were looking for in the raids. Yeah, I just, I wonder what the feds were after yesterday when they raided his place in Miami and L.A. Uh, what was the nature of it? Were they going after footage? Was it related to the sex scandals that has been going on? Or was it related to something else? Because I think he has other things other than just the Cassie accusations and those kind of things going on. The thing about Diddy, which is crazy, there are so many former employees that are all on podcast right now just burying him. His ex-security is burying him. Oh, yeah. boy. I, I got a lot of stuff to uh, try to look at because I only found two videos during the show. And we played the audio. But somebody sent a text, and they said, if you've got uh, time, check out this old artist from Bad Boy called Jaguar, where she talks about the parties and the weird deaths slash murders surrounding Diddy that uh, he has worked to keep secret, crazy allegations. So... It, it will be interesting to see just how much of this comes to light. And I think the one thing that we've pretty much found for the most part is that 
man, these things do come to light. And look at the Harvey Weinstein stuff and all the things that just started rolling out. Yeah, her name is Jaguar Wright, and apparently she is talking details. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to dig into that. Uh-huh. So that uh, that could be interesting. <laughs> I love when people that had inside information, though, like if she was legit on Bad Boy Records as an artist, saw things behind the scenes, now is willing to talk because she realizes, okay, he's not going to be able to hurt me anymore. That's who I want to listen to. I think it did, even, did Mace, did he turn on Diddy, too? I think Mace is talking shit about Diddy, Diddy too. I don't know. I know they were tight, you know, once upon a time. Unless I'm, I'm getting it mixed up. I thought I thought they had words. You never know. When things start to get real and somebody can get pressed, that's the one thing that they do well is they start pressing people and say, hey, you're looking at some jail time. Do you want to avoid that and give us some more information? Oh, most people would throw. Yeah, that's <laughs> if you're talking about jail time and, okay, it's either uh, you're going to jail for 45 years, Mr. Ralston, or Sinicki is up the river for 60 years. What does he do? That's what they do. They press they, on do, you. They press you. And yeah. they, they want you to break, break. And if you tell, then you can get immunity. Yes. You will get immunity. I think a lot of people would do that. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see, you know, where that goes and what they wind up getting on them. Loyal and stuck in prison isn't something a lot of people are looking to do. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think, like, that's why Jeffrey Epstein got hung, because he was in prison, probably threatening to release the black book and give the names, and they were like, oh, no, you don't, bitch. You just committed suicide. Well, if you're at the point where you're, all, you, you, you're doing all that anyway, the lie or whatever you're involved in was so great and dangerous to that point where they, they would off you. The other stuff that we played today that I thought was a little eye-opening was the Cat Williams stuff, where he outed Diddy. And it made it sound like uh, Diddy was, um, sound like he, like Diddy wanted to diddle Cat, and Cat was like, no. And it sounds like Diddy, at least from some of the accusations, the initial rumblings, is that that video with him and the Bieber stuff, I mean, it looks very Michael Jackson as a 40 year old Diddy with a 15 year old Bieber, and they're going to have a camp over. And just some of the language in it was just kind of like, oh, this it is makes weird, you feel dude. weird. It does. Cat Williams has been going after Diddy for a minute, saying all this stuff. It, this is this isn't new with, when it comes to Diddy. Cat Williams says he's got all the information, and so he's just been compiling well, it for years. A month after he gives that interview, boom, take down on Diddy. Right. That, you could even if that's by accident, you look you look awesome if you're Cat Williams. You do. You're calling the shots. You do. So would Cat Williams roll on Diddy? And could he be a big part of it? And then what kind of stuff are we talking about? Because they're talking about what? Sex trafficking? They're they're, They're talking about pedophilia. They're talking about some serious stuff in the accusations. All of it. They're saying all of it. Boy, girl, we're talking 48 to 72 hour orgies where you don't know if everyone's of age in those kind of things. There's a lot of claims out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, it could be. Getting pretty interesting. And it, sometimes you'll watch these videos. You go, this is pretty good stuff. And then you'll watch another one kind of in the same vein. And they, they start going down the Illuminati route to go, all right, is this, is, it, is this going too goofy? Or is Diddy in the Illuminati? Yeah. In fact, uh, Daniel sent an email. He said, you know, you guys were asking earlier, the Illuminati does exist. It's called the Freemasons. I've got a family member who's grandfather was part of it and the pictures from back in the day are really crazy and dark well think about it just you know in life there's there's people that have power and influence and money they're gonna without a doubt make sure their environment or whatever is going on in their world is set to their their money and power doesn't diminish exactly and they've talked about i think is it at yale they have the skull and bone society that the bushes have belonged to and it's again one of those secret societies with the meeting house that has no windows and nobody else can go into it and you have to wear weird robes and all that that's all fine and good how weird does it really get if you want to dress up in your robes and have fun and shut the windows that's i don't give a shit how weird are we getting are we getting weird to the point where we're affecting others outside of that house crimes you start doing a deeper dive on the bushes that starts getting crazy too starting with george h bush and, you know, even, of course, his sons. But it sounds like he, you know, because he was CIA director, then vice president, then president. 
And there are some crazy stories about the involvements he's had. It's kind of maybe operating stuff as a member of the Illuminati. And that makes you think that's what it is. And even in the Illuminati, there's going to be a pecking order within oh, no the doubt. Illuminati. Absolutely. Yeah. You'll probably just have surface members and then you'll have the people that are really hardcore. So is the top person in the Illuminati the most powerful person on the planet? It could be almost like a governing board of three. Because I would imagine they'd probably have a hard time having just one person. <laughs> I was going to say, there's no way everyone's going to get on the same page for one person. I would, yeah, I would imagine it's it's something. If it is set up that way, you wouldn't trust all that power with just one person doing it. I'd love to know what's really going on to yeah. get the answers, or, or is it too much? I don't know if you'll yeah. ever know. Be crazy. Oh, I- these secrets run deep and powerful. Look, we're still trying to get just one pedophile from Jeffrey Epstein's list. At least yeah. with human mysteries, there's a chance you could find out. Mysteries of the universe, you're like, all right, what happens when you die? I don't fucking know. I'm never going to know until I die. At least with humans, there's human error that could happen. There, there's still a chance to find out what's going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah, I said earlier, my uh, daughter, Caitlin, she's uh, in L.A. right now for uh, work, and they're not far from Diddy's. She said they had four helicopters circling his place. Whoa. That's I, that's pretty big hardware. It looked like they had a shit ton of feds. Like, they weren't playing. Like They brought out the infantry. So whatever they were getting, I guess they must think it's good. And that's the one thing that was funny, the trolling from 50 Cent. He's like, they don't bring out that kind of stuff if they don't have something on you already well they thought too they were i read somewhere that weapons may have been uh yeah some people were saying that that could be it and then that would take away all the really salacious stuff that just has to do with him having maybe illegal arms and something like that it may not be that big a deal weapons and drugs not going to be a big deal it's the sex stuff people are that's going to be the evil shit It's sex trafficking it's pedophilia all that stuff if it's just he's got bunch of guns he's not supposed to have and you're like all right you're like oh the guy from bad boys he's a bad guns? wait he's a bad boy <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. we were also talking uh a little bit yesterday about the breaking the silence the quiet on the set kind of on the same thread i have heard that there is going to be another episode episode five released on april 7th It's going to be coming out, and they say this one could have maybe Amanda Bynes or Steve from Blue's Clues, and apparently they're going after everybody, and they say that they might even start uh, going after Disney when they're done with Nickelodeon. Damn. Much like Vince McMahon, that mouse is tough to get. It is, it is, but there was a video Miley had done, not that it was anything crazy, it was more on the hours that they put her through and looking at the legalities of that, talking about how she had to be on the set at 5 a.m. Hers is probably a little worked. different, though, because she had her dad on the set. Yeah. So she was probably way more protected than those Nickelodeon kids. Yeah, and I don't, like I said, I, I don't think uh, the, what she gave you is not opening the door like, oh my gosh, it's just that maybe they're working their kids too hard. I want to hear Amanda Bynes get real. I, I, wanna... she, I thought she had said she had a good experience and she had nothing to say. Wait a minute. Hollywood works people too hard. Well, no right. shit. I know. You're in fucking Hollywood. Uh-huh. When you go into Hollywood, know that they're going to work your soul to the, the the bone. I mean, that's what's going to happen. It's it's not an easy life. It's never it's never going to be. It's a sh- it, for a lot of people, I don't think it's the way. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of evil there. But yeah, they're going to make everyone work 18 hours. They don't give a fuck about your feelings. Yeah, you're right. It's money. But, it, well, that's just what, it comes down to money. It comes down to money. And that's an, another reason why, you know, you're going to see more of these documentaries, too. Yeah. A, well, they sell well. A, and it, it's, it exposes, but it also is making some money, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The exact thing, the exact beast that made all these issues is now making all these documentaries. Just it's remember that. Itself. It's, it's all... feeding itself. It's mm. the uh, uh, entertainment culture that we have to know. Yep. And, and our society loves a takedown. Yep. Takedowns really do well in numbers. Yeah, Princess said if you like the Sam and Cat show, then read uh, Janet McCurdy's book on I'm Glad My Mom Died. That exposes a lot, too. That, I saw an interview with her. She's got some claims about her mom. Her mom was evil. She said her mom gave her exams. Oh, my God. Up till 17 years of age. Her mom is creepy. I think she's dead, though. She is dead. She died. She got cancer and died. And 
I mean, I think it was probably the best thing that could have happened to Jeanette McCurdy, and she says such. Wow. Uh, we got uh, some other emails, too, breaking down Drake and all the money he gives away. He was doing uh, about 70 k he gave away for his Saturday and Sunday show in Sunrise over the weekend, adding up what we heard with the tallies that we had on the regular show today. Otto said, you know, he probably made that 70 k in just the merch. A hoodie was going for 220 and they sold out within an hour. Yeah, I mean, Drake Scott, they, they, I, I believe his team is doing this. 220 that's crazy. Uh, Go Birthday said, yeah, um, what he's doing, too, is a huge tax write-off. It's all donations, similar to what Taylor Swift did with the quote-unquote bonuses for her crew. Yeah, he figured he figured out an entertaining way to do it. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe he started a foundation and he's a 501c3 and it is a tax write-off. I just don't see him just randomly giving money out to somebody who has a sign. I think there's it's probably vetted to a certain extent. Okay. That's just my opinion. Well, That's a lot the, of money. The one thing I would imagine, if this is tax stuff, he's probably going to have to get a lot of information yes. from that person, including maybe social security numbers and all that for the donation, quote unquote. And, maybe, and honestly, maybe he does it. Maybe he offers the money. And if they are shady and they're lying, he just goes, okay, you don't get the money. Because you do. You're, you're going to have to get information for all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin asked, he said, you guys talking about the baseball player gambling scandal. I haven't really yet. I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. It's uh, the arguably biggest guy in baseball. He's a Japanese player. His name's Shohei Otani. He just signed with the Dodgers in a massive deal. And there were these improper wire transfers that were going on to a Sal- Southern California bookmaking operation where sports gambling is illegal. $4.5 million, and the fall guy became his translator. And Shohei oh, Otani was saying, yeah, no, it wasn't me. The translator was doing People are like, oh, well, how are you not noticing $500,000 at a time coming out of your accounts? He's like, oh, you know, that was just his thing. He was the translator, but he had kind of free reign on the account. So uh, people were looking at this say, is this another Pete Rose situation right now? Pete Rose's situation was gambling on baseball games that he was playing in. Favorably for his team, he claims – but it doesn't appear that any of these bets were on baseball. They were other sports. What a press conference that would be. Your translator is the one that's being accused of all this, and you're trying to defend yourself, but you have your translator there. So tell them I am not guilty, and it's you. He says he's guilty. So yeah. you have to yell at They're him They're on another translator him. now. <laughs> yeah. The other translator has been fired, and they found out with that translator, too, he said that he had gone to Cal Riverside, I think it was. Cal Riverside I was like, no, he didn't. He said he was a translator for the Boston Red Sox, and the Red Sox said, no, he wasn't. And so apparently this guy now has a, a whole sea of lies. So oh, boy. That's why it looks like it might just be Mizuhara is his name, was the translator, and it might all be him. But if any shade starts being thrown at Shohei Otani. It's another Pete Rose situation. And Pete Rose said yesterday, back in the 70s and 80s, I wish I had an interpreter. I'd be (laughs) scot-free. Pete Pete always with a quote. (laughs) So that's where that scandal seems like that is. I think it's going to be a bunch of nothing, but we'll see what happens. That is a restaurant I do think about quite often that I miss. The Pete Rose Ballpark Cafe, yeah? Yes, they had some of the best honey mustard these lips have ever touched. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, I, I miss that place. I, I, I love the vibe in there. Yeah. They, do, they have broadcast in there. Yeah, they had a little it was studio. Cool. Yeah, that is a cool concept. Yeah, why not? Do you remember that place? Uh uh-uh. uh. I you never, never went, went there. there. No, never. I didn't even really, I wasn't like in the know. I didn't know who Pete Rose was or about any of that scandal. And just only baseball. time I went there was when the East Point All Stars were in the Little League World Series and they had a big watch party there. That's the only time you went That's the there. The only time I've ever gone there. Do you yeah. ever go to Will Chamberlain's restaurant? I've been there one time right before it closed. Yeah, that was in Boca, right? It was. Yeah. I it wasn't there. as good as the Pete Rose, no. but it was still cool. Hey, when I went there, it was really sad. It was toward the end days. Of the, world <laughs> wow. it was wow. just, the retirement. It was dark. <laughs> it was like outdated. There was you, nobody there. There was already rumors that yeah, this place is not going to make it. Yeah, you could tell it wasn't going to make it. I'm like, well, this is the last time we're ever going to be in here. So, uh, Coco Golf, unfortunately, got eliminated from the Miami Open. Meow. Yeah. It was only her second loss of 24 matches on U.S. soil. But, yeah, unfortunately, her Del Rey girl got uh, the boot. She's gone. Uh, Greg in the 772 said, Jaybird, you got to watch Poor Things with Emma Stone. Oh, I want to see that. Willem Dafoe, Mark uh, Ruffalo. 
You My do? wife wanted to see it, so we started last night. I was progressively thinking, holy shit, this is weird. And yes, that is a dachshund with a duck head, with a chicken, with a Boston Terrier head. But I couldn't stop thinking about if this is a bird movie or not. It is one of those critically acclaimed movies that everybody talks about. But I love Emma Stone. And in it, I just think that she did a really great job of portraying this full-grown woman that's supposed to be a toddler like what and then just the way it's shot is very like artistically amazing i i, I love the way they shot it it's, they're, they're clearly going for the oscar on this one yeah they got nominated oh they did okay. oh they yeah. absolutely yeah. did i think she won i think she won for best <laughs> actress didn't she well it sounds like they were going for it everything you just said it's got the recipe of we're trying to go for a trophy yeah, it looks very cool from the previews. You want to see it? You haven't seen it yet? No, I haven't seen it. I would love to see it. I'd love to see it on your big screen. Come on over. <laughs> I'll leave the door unlocked. The watch party. I uh, I sent you this. Have you heard anything about that J-Lo documentary with her and Ben Affleck? No. Oh, I, I've, I've seen not it. Heard anything. I've seen it come up <laughs> on fuck. like lists of stuff. So but it, I was just like, I don't know. So, I don't know how me and Danny started watching it, but we did. And I I, I was still, someone's got to tell me, is the documentary, are they trying to be funny? Is this a parody? Because if it's a parody, it's fucking genius. If it's real, it is obnoxious. It's probably and obnoxious. You, and you can't tell? Like, what makes you think it might be a parody? They don't do parodies, those two. Take themselves way too serious. Kevin, they take themselves so seriously. Ben Affleck wants none of this movie that she does. She says it three or four different times in documentary. Ben's not comfortable with this. So she's like, but fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. So this is her musical film, This Is Me Now, A Love Story. Oh, man. So much tears, Virginia. It's rated O for overdramatic. <laughs> it, it, now, it, is it the This Is Me Now? Because they say she also has an Amazon Prime documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told. That's the one, I, that's okay. the one I'm talking about. The Greatest Love uh, Story Never Told. So it's, uh, ben Affleck uh, looking uh, like he's a hostage in that thing. It's about like her and how her and Ben reunited Oh, I think the reason why I bring it up is I think Virginia would love to hate watch it. The greatest love story never told. Oh, it's a song by J Lo as well. It's a whole. It's a whole. It's the movie because you can't call it a music video. She gets mad if you call it a music video. It's okay. a movie, but it's not a full movie. It's only like forty five minutes. It's never been done before, Kevin. Oh. and she puts up thirty million of her own dollars. She said, no one wants to buy it. What she, is it? It's fucking weird, man. It's a it's something it's a project where you when you have too much money and you're taking yourself too seriously. She huh. goes on to say that uh, this is true love. It does exist. Some things are forever. Please don't give up on that because that's all that matters in life. Love. Well, she's crying in the documentary, but she's crying about her and Ben Affleck's breakup. But I'm like, you're with him now. So what the fuck are we crying about? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, stop your crying. No, it just it, it seemed like it was very okay. And three, two, one, cue the tears, go. That's how it felt. At least to me, it did. Is it real or is it like a scripted thing? Is it a documentary? It's, it's a documentary. I was I was maybe giving them. Huh? It's a documentary, dog. It's real. But it's a movie. It's a it's a Do song, so it's a music video as well. No, it's a documentary about the movie song she did. So there's two there's two projects going on here. Oh boy, I'm only talking about the documentary about the project, which really does focus on her love with Ben, and it is holy shit. Hmm. You should watch it. Yeah, you know Jennifer Lopez. She's never been. Any person, no, no, it doesn't seem like drugs, alcohol, anything like that. None of that stuff no. has ever no. interested her. Her drug has been fame and attention. Yes. And that she just can't get enough with. And yeah, there's somebody that's kind of reviewing this. And they said, you know, the big thing about Jennifer Lopez is it's her social comparison. And they said the problem with upward social comparison is that it could be positive, but it makes you feel like you're not where you need to be. So it can be motivational, but can also make you feel bad about yourself. And that seems to be her drug. She has to always kind of be there, be the it girl. She's put so much on her about being a success that she can never, 
give it up. And that's the drug that she craves. <laughs> I'm reading the reviews on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I really couldn't. I thought it was a joke for, for a minute. Isabel said, I played a drinking game. And every time she said, I'm an artist, I drank. I almost died from alcohol poisoning. <laughs> Oh, oh, if you're a JLo fan, you're going to hate what I'm saying, I guess. And I'm not trying to get you all bent out of shape. But as a person who doesn't celebrate her work too much, I thought it was pretty fucking comical. Oh, I love the I, critical reviews. I think what happens is I think sometimes people get lost in the sauce. You don't have to be that serious about yourself. Yeah, and I, I think that... Uh... She does, and she she wants to be taken so seriously. I get, I hear you. Yeah, and when you try so hard, which I think she does, then that's when it comes off. Well, just the what's was funny to me was just seeing Ben Affleck really did look like a hostage the entire documentary. Going, oh, I don't really want to be doing this. But does he know how to fix his face? What do you mean? Like he always looks mad. He looks. He almost looks kind of just broken. <laughs> I think he goes. It seems like he goes along with a lot of shit he didn't like to. He, that's what I, I gathered from it. He expressed at least three times how he was not down to want. He wasn't comfortable at all doing this. Okay. And then they they cut their. I know he's not comfortable doing this, but that that. But me as an artist, I'm comfortable doing this, and I'm gonna do it. it Says so like, <laughs> fuck you, Ben. Okay. The uh, greatest love story never told. That is the Amazon Prime documentary that you can check out. People are wanting to know where to watch it, so that would be an Amazon Prime. Feature. It would be great if people haven't seen it yet and they go, all right, Bird, your review was so far off, you got you got dog shit in your eyes. Or they go, Bird, you're right, it was ridiculous. I mean, if you got dog shit in your eyes, you're definitely going to get fake pink eye. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, fascinating stuff. There's just so much good celebrity crap to, to drink in. <laughs> <laughs> I got to stop watching that shit. Yeah. There's a lot coming at you. There is just, I mean, there's just too much. Well, have you ever watched something accidental, deadly, and then you kind of got into it? That's what happened with this thing. Okay. And I'm watching it because we're working on something for the show, and it was on the background, and I got sucked in and going, Danny, are you watching this shit? <laughs> oh ben doesn't want to be here. The greatest love story ever told. <laughs> <It's> so... <laughs> I don't know, man. How high are you? I, I don't. I don't think she's 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 trying to reach me as a demographic. I no. get it. <laughs> Is this a, a, a lawsuit we've heard of with Diddy, or is this just breaking? It's uh, He's being sued by Rodney Lil Rod Jones. Lil this, Rod? Yes, he's accused of assaulting and sexually harassing his former employee. That sounds like a dude. Yeah, no, that's the claim for Diddy. Yeah. It's, it's guys and girls. Guys and girls, Kevin. Do we know of Rodney Lil Rod Jones yet? No, I haven't heard that yet. All that's right. not a security, is it? Because he's definitely not little, his security. Oh, okay. But I you know, sometimes things are ironic. Right. I uh -huh. don't know anything about this dude, but yeah. <laughs> Look, everybody, I mean, there's blood in the water. Oh, my God. But there's been blood in the water. You could tell he but was doing it. But now it's a massacre. But now it's, like, it's I'm, just I'm like, okay. In now. If you've got a story, yeah. you better tell it now because uh, he's, <laughs> there's so many. You're going to be like eighth in line if you don't get it out there quick. I think you're going to see a lot of music stories come out. Yeah. Because it's the one. In, no I mean, doubt. Yeah. The, the movie ones, they really got hit pretty hard. Your, your TV and movie entertainment. Right. I'm not saying they didn't come from music. But mm -hmm. we all know there's way more dirty secrets in the music industry. Totally. Slices industry. And people are debating as to whether or not Lil Rod might be the worst rap name of all time. <laughs> I think you might be on to something. All right. Well, we definitely got a lot of good stuff to uh, get through this week here on the KBJ Show. Thanks for being here today. Back tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. Goodbye.